So how long did it take you going from cleaning up storyboards to crying story? Uh, I think it was about a year. Maybe, maybe a little longer, a year, a year and a half. Tell me about the learning process. Was it difficult? How, how different it is, it is from playing out a comic book page as it is drawing storyboards for yeah, Comic books and, and uh, animation, you would seem, it would seem like they were similar, but I think they're very different disciplines. Where comic books, you have a page to worry about and the layout of the page and how you go from one panel to the next and building you know building toward the one panel that draws your eye in or the, the point of the story where animation is a series of different storyboards is you have a lot of other factors you have to take into account where it's the voice acting the, the pacing uh, timing uh, Thinking of uh, maybe the music that goes behind it and how you build the, ten the tension of the story. Um, it's a lot of different factors where you're drawing, you know, hundreds of panels to get to a single point. And uh, comic books, you're, you're kind of just picking and choosing, trying to get everything down within, at the most, I guess, 10 panels. Uh, every artist works different, but, you know five to ten panels or you can just have a splash page to tell everything so I think the discipline is very different though you're, you're similar in just drawing how much freedom do you get when you're storyboarding a show does it vary from show to show and director to director in terms of how uh, how you want to show what's going on uh, yeah it, it varies from uh, show to show uh, I've been on shows where you're given a lot of freedom and to interpret the script and, you know, and, and how you build toward the story points. And then I've been on shows where it's very, very meticulous. The script is, you have to stick to the script and it's very, there's a clear, very clear vision of what the, what the producers want the show. Some are very, very meticulous. Uh, I worked on Young Justice and it was the script was very very meticulous and uh, meticulous in terms of their same shots and stuff like that. Uh, to a point it, where it can describe the shot or it's very um, dense in the sense of there's a lot going on and a lot depends on on uh, certain moments in one script will lead to another script which you're not always you're not always aware of because you're not I'm not doing every episode so you kind of have to stick to the script because you're not exactly sure what's going on in a previous episode or a previous episode or a future episode so you kind of have to um, stick to the script and and trust that it all works out so tell me how you move from storyboarding to directing so uh, my first directing gig was on uh, Starship Troopers Roughnecks it was one of the first CG shows. Uh, How long have you been storyboarding? About a year and a half, somewhere around there. Uh, so it was a big production. CG has changed a lot since then. Um, but you know, I was just given the opportunity. Uh, I, they liked my work. They know. They knew my work habits. Uh, I was pretty dependable. Uh, I was pretty hungry. So they gave me the shot. And how was that experience? It was good. It was it was tough. It was a good experience. Uh, I learned a lot. I think every transition you make in animation, so far for me, I've learned a lot. I'm going from cleanup to storyboards, you start thinking of new things and seeing other people, what they do, and, and it informs you on decisions, future decisions on storyboarding. And the same goes from storyboarding to director. Uh, you're, as a director, you see every, what everybody else is doing uh, and get ideas. It's like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. That's a good 
way to think of it, and the kind of it's a library of information that you collect along the way. Some shows they have different people directing act, voice actors, and some shows that the animation directors direct the voice actors. Can you tell me about having to work with voice actors and directing them? When, when uh, yeah, every I think every show is different. Uh, some some shows I have been to the re voice record, and some shows uh, I have you know they, they just want me to concentrate on the storyboard aspect. <clears throat> uh, as far as voice direction, usually if I'm there, uh, you know I'm there with the producer and sometimes the writer, and uh, the story, uh, the voice director is there, and they they usually give notes and then they ask me or you know the writer or the producer like what do you think of this pass uh, are there any notes what do you what's happening during this uh, this is it a quiet moment is is there action involved should be the what you know what uh, the actors should go off of um, so yeah it's just a lot of back and forth communication between uh, the voice Your director to, to do it all yourself meaning control the voice directing as, you know, as well as the visual uh, I would say no as far as animation animation is very collaborative uh -huh. and if you, you can't collaborate with people I think if you had it your way would you want to direct the voice talent yourself well I've worked with really good voice directors and I think for the most part if you have a voice good voice director it's uh that that makes your life a lot easier and then you can just give small notes uh, because I've worked with Andrea Romano and Sue Blue and they are worked was spot on like they they got it right away you know and you give them small notes here and there but for the most part they made your life easier and as far as having all that control it's really a time management thing it's like do you want I have a limited amount of time on storyboards and worrying about worrying about voice direction and um, so there's I'm sure there's a lot of preliminary work before you go into the studio breaking down the script talking to the actors hiring the actors and uh, just a lot of work behind the scenes besides just doing the storyboard work that I probably would not enjoy. How long does it take it to, to do an episode? Let's use uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as an example. Uh, turtles from start to finish? Uh -huh. To do one episode. To do one episode. Uh, Alright, from storyboard standpoint, it's, it's, you have the script, you have the initial six weeks to storyboard and clean up. So that's the six weeks and then you have uh, a few weeks, three or four weeks for revision and then um, well, but before that there's an animatic review and then three weeks of revision and then there's a second animatic review and then another three or four weeks of, of uh, revision again on top of that and then you've got a uh, maybe a week or so to make a fin finishing polish on it before it's shipped um, so three months three months on the storyboarding end and that's not including writing the script shipping it to overseas getting animation is maybe 16 weeks over there and then get and ship back your maybe another week or two editing sound mixing uh, so it, it's a long process is there much difference between a traditionally animated show like Batman uh, yes, there are technical aspects in 2D and CG that are they're very different. Uh, CG is good with uh, where you can. It, 
your product can feel very uh, cinematic, but there are technical aspects you have to worry about, like render times and scene counts. It all depends on, like, because that all builds up. Like, if you have a big sweeping cam, there's the render time for that is can be enormous, and that'll slow down the process. And the overseas studio can o computers can only handle you know so much so you gotta kind of pick your shots um, there are limitations where the CG models there's, there can be cheats where certain things are built but don't necessarily fit together so you have to work around them cut around them sometimes so there are things like C 2d it's it's very you can you don't have to worry about rigging and lighting as much as, as you can draw whatever and then you have departments like paints and uh, timing uh, will, that will uh, you don't have to worry about as much as you do in CG. So, so is CG sweeping shots using camera movement? Camera mo every little camera movement is a render uh -huh. uh, because the background plate changes Okay, so as so long as the camera is static, it's, it's the price is kept low, is that basically it? It can be, but then you have, you also have the problem of scene count, because every time a new, you render a new scene, the computer's got to re, I'm not exactly sure all the technical jargon, because we had a CG supervisor that take, would be more informed, I was... So they don't tell you like, hey, when you're boarding something, don't do a lot of uh, camera well, movements. For turtles, for turtles, we got like there was render times on characters and backgrounds. They gave us like a rough estimate. Hey, don't do more than uh, 50 camera moves per episode. Or, but the scene count can only be you know don't the scene count can only, you know 400 scenes more than 400 scenes because of background because of just rendering like opening a new scene takes time for the computer to import all the assets and set up time and yeah so there's the setup times can be uh, like there's limited amount of set uh, scene count for setup times uh, and character render times like like crowd shots can be very render heavy so you gotta limit the crowd shots um, I mean you can do crowd shots but you, you gotta be aware of how many characters Characters are in what they're doing and how much how much you're uh, you just got to be creative with your shot selection you can't just choose whatever mm -hmm. and you're not as limited when you're doing traditional uh, in those respects yes it, for those shots like crowd scenes you probably still don't want to do because somebody's got to draw all the crowd the crowd and the characters design uh, it's, I guess it's, it's, it's hard Animate traditional moving camera shots too. Yeah, it's a, it's different. Yeah, like you don't want a lot of camera shots for traditional 2D. You know, you probably want to just slide the background. You don't want to animate the whole background because that can be full of retakes and timing. Uh, so it's different. It's probably the same as like I'm sp strictly speaking TV, like. Uh, Movie, there's probably different budgets, different time constraints, so we're probably a lot more free in uh, for a movie, a feature film. Whereas 2D, you're limited to schedule uh, and budget, um, so there's all different kinds of factors you gotta kind of weigh on choosing your shots. In that respect, do you have a preference between CG and traditional animation? <clears throat> I will always love 2D because I grew up with 2D and just the hand drawing is always appealing to me but CG can offer a lot so it's, 
I wouldn't say there's a preference. CG is a, it's just a different medium. It's like painting with acrylics or oils. That's um, I'm, I guess uh, I don't I don't prefer either. Uh, I mean I prefer I, I I can't choose really. It's they're both very fun disciplines to to work on.